Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Here I am in our studio on this quiz five. So as you notice, these are just easily combined uh, variables. Here we have gender and then acceptance. I took it right out. I even put for you to make it easier. I even put, which is interesting, female, male in quotation marks. So then all you had to do is copy and paste, same with acceptance, and put the C, name it whatever you want, like G for gender, but I have it gender here for um, the gender, obviously, and then acceptance, zero not accepted, and one accepted. Now remember, you have to essentially have it for the going up. So if you do code for something, the negative should be zero, the one, two, et cetera, should be uh, going up. So zero not survived for the Titanic, one survived, zero didn't get accepted, one got accepted. That's how kind of R works in that fashion. So if we change it around, we get the opposite. So let's take a look here at what we have for the answer. Now, as everybody knows, we're doing the simple GLM function because these are just simple variables. Uh, and the GLM, we'll just call it, oops, M for the model. So we're basically seeing if there's an association between gender and acceptance to this program. This was created by me, obviously. It's not based on a real data set. So what we're gonna see here in the GLM function is whether or not you get an association, then we're going to measure these associations. And though, you know, I mean, this is basically a first level statistics class. So it's, it's not that difficult. So you just get acceptance. I always hit three. Uh, and then it pops up. Then you do a tilde, tia tilde. And then we're doing gender pops up right here. And then I still write uh, family binomial, uh, even though we did that with the LM. Uh, you're gonna get the same thing. So let's uh, take a look on this. Why is there two? All right, so that is the thing, GLM. See that I always make those simple mistakes. And that's good because we always get errors. So always remember that uh, our studio or any of these statistical packages, they're like dogs, they smell fair. So we basically have what we're looking for and we get the summary. And all we're looking for, and you had a good amount of time to do this. So what we're looking for is this. This is basically saying that in the logit odds, I know it's different than the regular odds and probability if you watch the other lecture, is negative for gender male. You have a negative, a negative 2.862 log odds chance of getting into the university than if you were female. So there is a statistical significance. It's not that, that low, it's just 0 0.03. Remember, our cutoff is 0 0.05 in the social sciences usually. So we only have that one star. That's why I asked you that. Our studio produces that star to kind of tell you one, two, or three. Three is big on the p-value. Now, obviously, when you move on to statistics, a lot of statisticians will say, okay, we're, we're putting too much emphasis on the T uh, test, the Z value, et cetera, that, that gives us the P value and we're going to need other measurements. But for now, the P value is very, very important still to understand. So it's below that, this is significance. And then you get the null deviance. The null deviance, remember, uh, reflects what this is with the intercept without the independent variable and then the residual deviance here is with the independent variable and what's important to note about the residual deviance any word with residual basically in statistics is bad because that's measuring your variability of the data I'm not saying you want because uh, I was talking to some students who ran some 
data and they didn't find significance, but that was very insightful. So if you are going to run your data, which you have to for the final paper and it's not significant, that can also be very valuable. So I'm not saying you want low uh, residuals in all of these, but your residual deviance, if you are looking for an association for it to be significant, then it has to be somewhat low. And what's low again, it's the same with the p-value, it's the same with the r squared, which we talked about, it depends on the discipline, it depends on what you're doing. But this is pretty good, a null deviance of 20, and then you have a residual deviance that is going down. You need a residual deviance that, that is, is lower than the null deviance, and you do have it, so this isn't too bad. Uh, and I wanted you to actually know the exact numbers on these quizzes so you would know, you know, okay, what's the p-value, what's the uh, uh, the male, the large likelihood to be accepted into this graduate program, and obviously it's negative 2.8, let's just say negative 3 practically, so that's pretty significant within this uh, uh, um, graduate program. So that's important. And the null deviance here, 20, and then the residual deviance does go down, which is good, where, because we want a lower residual. Residuals are essentially, if you want a statistically significant association, they're bad. <laughs> Always remember that because this is the variability of your data. So this is measuring essentially what your data isn't predicting and you do want your data if you if you're looking for statistical significance but again i can't stress enough to say you're not really supposed to look for anything you're supposed to let the data fall but it's an indication that there is an association between these video uh these these variables and remember this is a, a, a larger regression this is two Variables, we have gender and acceptance. Those are not repeat, re not continuous variables. These are variables, just as we can see, dummy variables with acceptance, where you say not accepted and accepted. So it's pretty interesting. And remember, if you're interested in starting to plot these things, this is uh, ggplot2 is a great way to start thinking about how to plot these. Now, I just can get out of the library because it's already on my thing. But you know, this is uh, ggplot is, is, is a pretty cool thing that I want you to start uh, uh, looking at. Now, I cheated a little there. I just went back because I did this earlier and hit the button uh, because under time constraints, end of the semester. But here we have a very interesting uh, ggplot. So ggplot m, which I did over here, uh, that's aesthetics. X is for acceptance down here. And then fill gender. This is a good little chart if you're just doing um, not, uh, these nominal variables, uh, the ggplot is, is an amazing um, uh, package. So then you can basically start looking at these things and changing the color. I noticed if I go color, let's say black, that actually uh, does the outline, as you can see, changes the outline form if you like it or not. And then the labs function is interesting because that's what gives you your... Um, name so the title is let's call this just what do we want to call this let's say you know um graduate program acceptance and then you start adding different things like okay i don't like this count thing so let's just say um acceptance um, rates. So then that's the Y. Oops. And then X will call acceptance by gender.
So what we have here now, I changed it, acceptance rates, acceptance by gender, and then graduate program acceptance, and then you have the female male. And as you can see, this is how I know that it's obviously zero one because here you have acceptance. It's, it looks a lot more significant with the with the female here than the male. And look at that. That that looks pretty uh, interesting statistics. So remember, and someone did ask about how to get. Uh, this into your paper. So I want to stress that you, all you can do is export this and you can save the image. So when you save this image, you, what you're doing is basically, you know, wherever you save it, you look at your directory, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So here's some stuff, practices, voices, you know, et cetera. So you basically are able to save this in uh, your thing, oh, there it is. So like, and then view after saving. So, you know, you wanna save it and then you can go anywhere you want. You gotta look for, you gotta look to where to save it, et cetera. But I always save it in um, photos because then all you have to do in the word document is, you know, insert this photo. So it's very easy, or even in a PowerPoint, uh, you can do that as well. So this was pretty cool. Uh, I really enjoyed this and I hope you're enjoying the class and all the stuff. We did get a couple papers in that were very good. I was going to maybe send them out as examples, but this is, this is basically in a nutshell what we're doing for this GLM function. So if you have those two uh, categorical variables, you have dummy variables, that is we call zero one, this is perfect. Uh, and then we'll get to, uh, you know, the class winding down. I want to do more ANOVA and multinomial stuff, but as as long as you're getting um, the basics of this, particularly, particularly under these tough conditions of this crisis, I hope everyone's staying safe and everyone's doing well. I hope you didn't hate too much my April Fool's joke, but I just can't help it. I got to do the April Fool's thing. I just got to, I, I, even in this horrible crisis, am I a bad person? Yes. Yes, I am. So uh, I hope you didn't get too offended by that. I hope you loved it. You chuckled that we all need to laugh under these conditions. So best wishes, everyone. And this, in a nutshell, is from the quiz we took.